Man, the Sega Master System is just so cool. Now here in the United States, it's all about Nintendo, but I first played the Sega Master System before I even touched an NES controller. I know, it has a, has a little desk cover on it, but here you go. It has a cartridge slot, it even has a spot for their card games. The pause is featured on itself, which is kind of weird, but whatever. But if you're not that familiar with the Sega Master System, it's all good. The games I'm featuring in this video are my five-star Sega Master System games. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. I'm an old school retro gamer. You wanna see something cool? Check out the thumbs up button right below this video, right, like right here-ish. And watch what happens when I say, like this video. Hopefully you liked it. And I hope you're subscribed too. And though the videos are free, you can support the channel by checking out some of the cool stuff I sell, including this air freshener that smells like styrofoam and static. This air freshener smells like your grandma's house with freshly baked cookies, butterscotch candies, and a freshly mopped floor. And a lot of people are loving this one. It's like red wine bubble bath and a vanilla scented candle. I also sell my homebrews on there. Make sure you check that out. Riggedgames.com, link in the description below. I even sell these hats there too. Got a couple of them left. And we're kicking off this list with what they're trying to make their mascot character, I believe, Alex Kidd in Miracle World. A little hard to compare Alex Kidd to Super Mario now, but Alex Kidd in Miracle World versus Super Mario Brothers, well, as iconic as Super Mario Brothers is, Alex Kidd in Miracle World I think just does Game Busters over Mario. First of all, you got a punch button. Can't do that in Mario. I just like the graphics. I like the cartooniness. I love the colors that they use. Great color palette. Great color palette for the Sega Master System. And you immediately jump in the water in the first stage of this game too. It's crazy. Now a lot of enemies to check out. I, I, again, I just love just about everything about this game. There's a nice difficult factor to this game as well. The idea for each stage, you gotta find the onigiri. Now as a kid, I didn't even know what an onigiri was. I thought it was literally like a mug of like root beer. <laughs> like that's the, the, the mug with the foamy stuff spilling over the edges. Yeah, well. There's also shops and you can actually purchase upgrades, purchase items that'll help you out in your quest, including a motorcycle. That's right, you just blast through everything. Could you imagine if you had a motorcycle in Super Mario Brothers? Come on now. Alex Kidd in Miracle World, I'd give it five stars. And we're talking Alex Kidd. We can also talk about Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. What a great crossover this is. Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. This would be like if they would have made Mario in Hyrule, or maybe Kid Icarus in Planet Zebes, or something like that. You know, it's it's that crossover that just makes sense, and it's just fun. It's Shinobi. It's a cartoony. It's a, a more quirky version of Shinobi because you play as Alex Kid, who's now apparently a ninja or samurai or something. You know, he's a Shinobi, I guess. The music, uh, you know, holds up. The music is like the same as Shinobi and stuff like that too. A lot of the enemies are the same from uh, Shinobi, but still in that Alex Kid style. What a fun idea! Yeah, Alex Kidd in Shinobi World, definitely one you want to look up. And there's a couple of other Alex Kidd games. Uh, we're not going to leave those on the list. Those are those are definitely not five-star games. Fun to check out, uh, not five-star games. <laughs> Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. Anything anything Disney is usually going to be pretty good. Sometimes not so much, but this one makes all the sense in the world. If you loved DuckTales for the NES, this one is so much like DuckTales, it almost hurts. Now you would think, like Mario, you just have to jump on top of enemies, but you can't just jump and let that be it. You actually have to hit the kind of pounce button. Like one button is jump and then the other button lets you attack the enemy, like you know, doing the butt bomb on them. And again, you can use that bounce to reach higher places or you know, break through rocks and stuff like that too. You might find some secrets along the way. And when you find these secrets, you're, oh, there's, there's extra stuff. There's coins, there's cake. Yeah, like I said, a lot like DuckTales. <laughs> <laughs> a lot like DuckTales, but super fun. Another all-time classic in Fantasy Zone. I think I would give Fantasy Zone five stars when you rank these games among themselves on the Sega Master System. Now, would I give Fantasy Zone five stars on the NES? No, not so much. Not so much. Not even like the import version, which is like better than the Tengen version. But for the Sega Master System, it just makes sense. If you're not familiar with Fantasy Zone, come on. It, it flies this cute little ship which I wish that would make a resurgence uh, in modern day. The enemies drop coins, you can scroll back and forth. Smooth scrolling for an 8-bit game on this game too. And when you destroy all the enemy pods, that's when you can uh, fight the boss. And each boss has a, or each stage has a different boss. Fun to see. Again, love the colors, love the uh, animation. Cute music too. Move on to the next stage. And of course the shops as well, there's shops on here. So the money that you do collect, you can use to get um, upgrades and items. They don't last forever, unfortunately. And you, you even die spectacularly. <laughs> How about that in Fantasy Zone? Um, I'd, I'll go ahead and throw Fantasy Zone 2 in there too. Why not? Uh, Fantasy Zone 2, more of the same. Uh, colorful, bright. Um, this one features, you know, sometimes not just uh, money, but they also drop like a warp. It turns into a warp so you can go to the other part of the stage uh, to complete these stages too. 
a lot more of the same. I'm more fond for the first one. That's where all my nostalgia is. The second one, very, very good though. So if we're talking about the first one, uh, we can go lump in the second one as well. Why not? Golden Axe Warrior. If you love The Legend of Zelda, you're going to love Golden Axe Warrior. Why? Because it is so much like Legend of Zelda, it hurts. It hurts my feelings how good this game is and hurts my soul even more that so many people didn't get to experience this game. I've never played it all the way through. It's, it's on it's on my backlog, my forever backlog, we all have one, um, of games that I, I've played it a bit, but I've never actually completed the game, never played it all the way through. Would love to do that sometime. Never mind the treasure chest mimic. This game features tr tree shrub mimic, bush mimic. Could you imagine if that was an enemy in The Legend of Zelda? You go up to like, you know, try to burn the bush or whatever like that, it just pops out at you and starts attacking you. Huh. Be insane. Golden Axe Warrior. Yeah, nothing like... It says Golden Axe Warrior. It's nothing like the other Golden Axe games. It is its own thing. And bless it for it. Govelius? Is that how you pronounce this game? Govelius? This is an interesting sort, too. Um, this is... Well, it starts out like side-scrollers. So you're like, okay, this is a little interesting. Like a fax or something like that. Maybe a, uh, like a like a Monster Boy or something like that. I don't know. You, you can see what it looks like, clearly. It plays a bit like that. You can slash your sword, and there's other enemies, too. Those very Sega Master System-y eyes on creatures is is unmistakable <laughs> with the enhanced colors and enhanced palette and all that even the kind of bosses in this game are cartoony cool a lot like how like mega man mega man had those kind of like mid bosses and stuff like that yeah a little bit like that um so it starts out like this style of game and then when you leave the cave then it turns into hey another legend of zelda type game so again kind of like legend of zelda but then when it does the dungeons the dungeons is more side scrolling platformy slash your sword and stuff like that too very cool to see very interesting to see this one's always a uh, very high on a lot of people's lists for best games ever gotta give it five stars on this one for sega master system games something to look out for for sure oh you're gonna give me the squiggly text are you well kinsaden 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 this is a fun one a little bit slower of a scrolling game here but any game that features the creepy mythical ghost zombie monster things you know you're almost waiting it's, it, it seems like the type of game that eventually there's going to be some cycloptic jumping umbrella <laughs> which I'm sure comes from some kind of lore um not not in this first stage anyway uh but it's that type of game where you're gonna see like the, the, the creepy kind of like ghostly um things from uh from this culture here i love it i absolutely love it um and this game also falls it's just it's just unique enough that though know, is it like anything on the nes maybe a little bit i mean there's a couple of games i could probably compare it to but it's still just kind of its own thing and a game that you have to just kind of experience for yourself and uh, you can see like, you know, how how big these uh, areas are <laughs> where you need to get to and everything uh, when you move on to the next stage and move on from there and go inside these rooms and I mean, just just figure it out, man. Very cool game. Interesting to see Miracle Warriors. And again, this came out during a time when RPGs like turn based RPGs weren't as popular as they were in Japan at least here in the United States of America. So when we see something like this, it's like, well, it looks interesting enough, but it looks a little confusing because you're too busy looking at the graphics and not like the grid to the upper uh, right-hand side of where you're going, really. But then when you get there, or you know, when you're on someone, you can run into you know a person and talk to them or whatever, and eventually you will run into enemies and you can attack the enemies just the old fashioned way. You hit, then they hit, you know, this that turn-based style which I don't honestly care for that much, but when it came to RPGs, this one was very cool and very unique for its time. And I'm going to give it five stars um, based on its uh, creativity for its time and its uniqueness, because at the time we weren't really seeing anything like this for a home console video game. And very cool to see this even on the Sega Master System. It's wonderful. Quartet, we got to talk about it. Um, this should have been called Duet uh, for the home version <laughs> because you're only two players. The arcade version is four players simultaneous. Love it, love it, love it. Think, hmm, well, I, at least let me talk about uh, how your life bar works because you have the, uh, you have like your, the points ticking down a little bit like Gauntlet. You know how Gauntlet, you don't really have like hit points. You just have like, uh, like it just keeps ticking down and down and down, you know, and, and, and even more so when you run into an enemy or something like that. That's a lot like that with this game. Um, not the longest stages or uh, uh, rounds in this one, not the, not the longest rounds in this one, but the idea is to get to the end to find the boss. And when you find the boss, he, he who holds the key, uh, defeat them, grab the key, go through the door, move on to the next stage. 
there's a lot of those. Um, the, the stages aren't very big, and sometimes you'll even walk right by the exit door, but you gotta find the guy with the key first. So that's why you have to explore a little bit. A lot of items you can pick up along the way. Um, just an absolute wonderful game. Quartet in the arcade probably might, I mean, whenever I think about it, it might be my favorite arcade game of all time. Fun to see it on the Master System, though. And it plays extremely well on the Master System, enough for me to give it five stars anyway. Sonic the Hedgehog came out for the Master System as well. Now, when I first played this, I already had Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis, and it was during a time when I would say, oh, well, I have it on the Super Nintendo, let me rent the NES version just to compare, just to see what they could have done. And to my surprise, the Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Master System played extremely well. Extremely well. And it wasn't like a one-to-one -one port of the Genesis version. It was still kind of its own thing. It was Sonic the Hedgehog, but it was still very much so its own style of game. I mean, I, I gotta, gotta give it five stars. It's just wonderful to see on a Sega Master System, especially. Wonder Boy 3, the Dragon Trap. We gotta talk about Wonder Boy 3. Now, I'm more familiar and more comfortable, I guess, with myself with the Adventure Island games. But then on the flip side, you have the, uh, the, the Monster World games, the Wonder Boy games. Um, I, I kind of like, you know, I almost like split off like a complete fork. One went one direction, one went the other direction. And for the sake of Master System, this is the one to get. Um, you start off with all the hearts. <laughs> I love that. You can get other, um, you can get other, you know, upgrades and stuff like that later on too. But I just love, again, that, just that cartoony aesthetic that this game brings and so many games bring to the Sega Master System where you can, you know, you run and you can slash your sword and you pick up the upgrades. This is my kind of game. This is exactly my kind of game. Um, Maze-like levels, you know, might get lost a little bit. Gotta find your way through. Bosses will pop up as well. I mean, the first boss you see is like this, you know, Mecha Godzilla looking something or other anyway. <laughs> a little bit of a challenge too on this uh, first boss. But then uh, from there, uh-oh, then all of a sudden, after you collect some coins, you turn into a dragon. Now all of a sudden, you, um, you're in dragon mode. That's... how cool is that? <laughs> Best thing ever. Wonder Boy 3, if you're looking for Sega Master System games to play, check out this opening. Oh my god. Zillion! Based on the anime, manga, there's probably a manga in there somewhere as well. Once you figure out how to play this game, it's wonderful. And it's not... Uh, how do I how do I put this? It, it's not like there's a huge learning curve to play this game because this looks like I hate to say Mission Impossible 2, but it looks like just kind of a side-scrolling maze-ish, uh, destroy the computers and stuff like that too. But then you have these passcodes that you gotta type in. But once you kind of you know defeat these things, you can pick up these items and upgrades and everything. It does kind of make sense if that makes sense. Such a fun game, and it's one I keep coming back to as well. There is a Zillion 2, it's terrible. Especially compared to this one. <laughs> At least in my opinion, anyway. Zillion is the one you want to check out for the Sega Master System. Just covering US games in this one because there are a billion games that came out in Brazil. Uh, there's also a lot of great games that came out in the UK too, but at least for this video, five-star US games on your Sega Master System. If I left any off the list, make sure you let me know in the comments. I did a lot of other five-star, I, I did five-star NES, five-star Super Nintendo, five-star 64, five-star Genesis. Check out all those videos.